Even without eyes, she had a clear sense of the place. She could hear the color, see the sound, feel the imbalance. Lyrical metaphors for trusting not people, but the environment. She could never get those little phrases out of her head, probably because they had been beaten into her so well. Her old drill instructor spoke in poetry and punched in prose. The lie of sight, he loved to remind her. Trust your nose, trust your gut. Your eyes will get you killed. The black sack over her head was designed to keep out the light, to obscure the one sense most easily fooled. That was fine. She rarely believed her eyes anyway, a lesson well learnt. Her most primal sense, the one wired straight into the lizard part of her brain, smelled the fear. The smell told her she was screwed. It also told her she was not alone. As to the why, that question had barely made its way into her consciousness. How she had gotten nabbed, bagged, and dumped into this place was something she could barely get her head around. There were only a few people she knew capable of taking her by surprise, let alone subduing her. And they were dead. But the who and why would have to wait. Her training and her gut told her that now was about just staying alive. Lying on a hard floor, her honed senses of smell and hearing told her there was more than one person in the room. Men and women. The women were easy to detect. There were two different perfumes on the air, just enough fragrance for her nose to pick them out of the mixed scents of sweat, fear, and urine. Clearly not military. Civilian? What the hell were civilians doing here? The men were also easy to sense. The movements she heard around her felt nervous, skittish, the kind of motions dogs make when they get caged and pace back and forth. Women tend to stand still, consider things be less twitchy. Also, the sour breath and general man stink was recognizable anywhere, training barracks in the field or in the dark with a hood over your head. There was also the smell of iron and the tang of blood in the air. Fresh blood. Her blood, she knew as she pulled on the cords, cutting into the flesh of her ankles and wrists. Of course it was her blood. Good lubricant. She could eventually use it to work her hands free. She might have to break a bone or two in one of her hands in order to slip through the ties, but she'd done it before, she could do it again. If she lived long enough to try. They were close, too close. She could hear their breathing, rapid, high in their chests, bodies geared for emotional flight, but with nowhere to go. One breathing pattern was different. A woman, maybe, but no, this one smelled like a male, his breathing deeper, steady breaths, perhaps more training than the others, and he was focused on her. He was behind her to the right. She would have to take him first. Suddenly someone grabbed the bag and a clump of her hair and pulled quickly, removing both. Her head jerked back with the pull and the pain. She remained face down. A bright, searing light blinded her. Not the clean light of day, but the dirty, green light of bad fluorescence. Just as she thought. Indoors, enclosed, imprisoned. Someone knelt in front of her. One of the women. She squinted and raised her eyes to see. Now she got to look at part of the room. White floor white walls, empty. There was a video monitor embedded in a far wall, and next to it, an old-fashioned digital clock that looked more like an old-fashioned oversized alarm clock. But the face showed zero 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 in deep red numbers. Why a clock? Not a clock, a timer. And the woman, blonde, Hair pulled back into a messy ponytail, wearing jeans and a frumpy house blouse. Hey, I'm Ruby. I'm not going to hurt you. I can undo your hands and feet. Would you like to sit up? It might be more comfortable. Ruby leaned forward and grabbed her by the shoulders and gently lifted her off the floor to a sitting position. Ruby leaned down close enough that she could have used her mouth to rip out Ruby's throat. But then what? She was still tied up like a calf at a Texas rodeo. She did not resist. The time would come. Right now, she at least had a better tactical view. Her survival percentage just increased substantially.